cities across Asia, sex is a major moneymaker. <laughs> Gangsters run prostitution rings that control the money and the women. Known as pimps, these middlemen operate within criminal networks that profit from selling sex using deception, coercion, and violence to maintain control over their prostitutes. Prostitution, they say, is the oldest profession. Across Asia, prostitution is common, tolerated in some countries, but illegal in others. In Mongolia, any form of prostitution is against the law. But in the criminal underworld, the sex industry here is hugely profitable, attracting the attention of opportunists, men who are hungry for their slice of the pie. Behind every prostitution ring is a group leader, one man who runs the entire operation, a pimp. As the leader of a criminal group, Danny was responsible for the daily operations of his men and the well-being of his prostitutes, a role that he took seriously. Having spent years patrolling the streets of downtown Ulaanbaatar, senior patrol officer Captain Nim Saikan knows how and where the prostitution rings operate in Mongolia's capital city. The hierarchy within a gang of pimps provides the group with certain advantages. It's the leader's role to maintain order and ensure that everyone is working towards the same money-making goals. When the girls are threatened, harmed, or even kidnapped by rival groups, it is the pimp's job to ensure that the girls are safely returned. In exchange for this protection, a portion of the women's income is given directly to the group. Women 
зохох хэмжээний хүлээс авч хариу төрөн хэмжээний хүл авдаг гэсэн нөлөөлийг нэг while the actual amount can vary based on the number of women and the status of the clientele involved an average thug in a gang of pimps can earn up to 50 US dollars per week while a boss can easily make 500 or more I think that's an interesting thing this one piece will make 52 layers watch on mobile devices or the big screen all for free no subscription required одоо өөртөө бол хамаагүй тэгээ ярьж байгаа юм яаж гэдэг их байхгүй ийм үйлчлэгчнэр тэгээ бихэн багуултанд орсон тэгээ бүр зохион багуултанд ороод бүр ингээд тэдэр чинь одоо том том хүмүүст үйлчлэлтэй тэгээд нөгөө цагийн 100 доллараас доошоо үйлчлэхгүй загнамдаа 150 доллараар үйлчлэлтэй тийм хүмүүс байгаа шүү дээ тэгэл би ер нь долоор өгч минь 345 with 40% of the population of Mongolia living below the poverty line, pimping can be a lucrative trade. In addition to protecting the girls, one of the primary roles of the pimp is to connect customers to the prostitute. <laughs> орлогоос тодорхойх үеиг авдаг. Энийг бодё яг баргаж ажиллах чи өөрийнхөө нэг эхэлж байгаа ажил хэмжээнд ойлгоцсон үлдэ ингээд энэ жуулчлах ажил дагардаг орой агентэ хайрдаг. Сэч хүн ажиллаад өдөр намардаг ч тийм энэ хэлбэр дорцсон. These are the guys who they are getting lots of money out of it. So I would easily assume that those people who have no values, who have uh, very little understanding of uh, what they are supposed to do in their own life, these are the people who become, uh, usually become pimps. And uh, this is easy money out of exploitation of the girls they are working with. Hen ol yerusel, yna ochid ymhtaj yw dyn bi yw gwnd yw lhyd bas yw n maas gorloog hwyrg yw sdag chag yna hwn. Tgheer yn zwyslag chitgid yn dhwchoo ord yn dair. Unhyr odo yag tair orloog nasan dhwyrhaig wachd uud. Odo sanghwg yn chadwyr gwy bilim yw n orloog gwy hwmwys. Yn gyn bi yw gwnd 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 to protect their profits, pimps need to bring new prostitutes into the group on a regular basis. But enticing young women into prostitution carries severe prison terms. Instead of doing the dirty work themselves, the pimps have created a system of recruitment that has taken prostitution to epidemic levels. In Ulan Batar, Mongolia's capital city, police chief Otan Bayir runs one of the busiest precincts in the central district. Their work has revealed how organized prostitution rings operate throughout the country. Ямар хэлбэрээр, цохон байгуулд ямар хэлбэрээр үйлдэгэж юмын бэхээр. Сау масаж нь үйл ажилгаа яуулах, арцингэн нь үйл ажилгаа яуулах, караокин нь үйл ажилгаа яуулах гэсэн ең байдлаар халах бачилж. Хүхтүүдийг, хүхтүүдийг, бийг нь үйл үйлэх ажилдэг цохон байгуулах. Ем хэлбэрд шилтсэн ем хэрбэр шалагадаж in order to protect themselves from investigators, pimps are now using intermediaries to recruit new prostitutes on their behalf. By keeping themselves out of the equation, the pimps avoid criminal charges. On the 15th of December, 2010, Felicia brought three young women to join her at her workplace. A prostitute for several years, Felicia was eager to find new ways of making money. <laughs> A group of pimps enticed Felicia into the sex industry with promises of easy money. But now the pimps needed Felicia to bring them more girls. 
ээжэд хэлсэн ээж тэгсэн чинь манай зах хөтөө тань тэгээ тэр хоёрыг давал авсан чинь гурван хүн надад нэлээд дөрөв хүн ажиллах хэрэгтэй тийм ажлын байр байгаа ойлголтой ойлголттой сахгүй тэгээд юу байсан чинь нэг хүн дутаад ялан үеийн дээр тэр нөгөө сүр насны охтууд байга юм л та яг одоо байнгын орлоггүй эцэгхийн хараа хяналтаас гарцсан тим хөвгтүүд энэ зөөшлөгчдийн гарт орсноор их аюул орох байж санхүү хоол хүнс өмсөх хувц гээд бүх зүйлдээ нөгөө зөөшлөгч итгэдийнха эрхшээлд орж ирж with four girls identified the pimps asked felicia to bring them across the border into china тим байдлаар одоо зүгээр тэр өөртөө хамгийн гол нь юутай байх хэвээр гэдэг юм их тайлбарлсан. But the girls never made it into China. Тайлбарлсан. Тэгээд зам нь өдрөө хил тавах гал гарахад л баригдсан. Mongolian law takes a hard stance on enticing women into prostitution. Although she claimed that she was not even aware of the crime she was committing. Felicia was given 10 years in a maximum security prison on various counts of organizing prostitution. Биеийн үнэхээр ярьлын хуулиар Монголд хориглосон байдаг эрүүг уулын 123 зүйлээр хориглосон байгаа. Хориглосон зүйл залцтай мөн захиргааны арга хэмжээ биеийн үнэлгэч нарт бас захиргааны арга хэмжээ авдаг. Эрүүг уулиар хориглох хүлээ хэлгэдэг. Биеийн үнэлгийг зохион байгуулсан усад бас зохион байгуулсан орон байраар хангасан While girls like Felicia end up serving 10 years behind bars, gangsters who pull the strings behind the scenes, bringing in the clients, housing the prostitutes, and collecting the profits, get off scot-free. This system of bringing new girls into the sex trade has seen the industry grow like never before. Prostitution in Mongolia has reached epidemic levels. It is estimated that there is now one prostitute for every 160 people in Mongolia. Some international organizations which worked with many of our organizations here, they came out with the figure of 19,000 prostitutes in Mongolia. Many young women, due to their fairly difficult economic and social situation, they are finding this way as probably most the easiest way to get the monies. Prostitution and pimping in Mongolia has become an international problem. Many of the girls here make their way to cities across China and even to Hong Kong, where stronger economies mean greater profits. A number of countries I can name, for instance, uh, China, Hong Kong, Malaysia. We have problems with South Korea, uh, some problems with Japan, uh, probably uh, uh, Israel, many countries in Europe. In the end of us, Mana Arvata thought, we ought to nick his wee netsner, young friendly rich, no crot under selling that Josh Lodnich. Энэ бүгдээр тахтар тусаа давчиж хэд хэдэн хотоор дамжуулж биеийг нь үлдүүлсэн юм асуудал шалгагдаж тэгж байж байгаа юм байна. Манай байх хөтөдөг энэ төрлийн гинт хэрэгт татаар оролцуулж явж байгаа дөрөв хэрэг гэж баригд ч шийдвэрлэгдсэн. Тэнд байгаад идэг хүмүүс байдаг. Тэдрийг би магадгүй нөгөө Монголын тамшины хөтөдөг гэж байдаг штэ. Тэд нар ч байдаг гэж магадгүй гэж би боддог гэсэн. Тэгтээ ингээд хүн ингээд чи одоо мэд өнгөж болохгүй гэд би хэлэх юм бол удаа ч одоо юу вэ юу амар хутлаа коммун царайлаа тийм нэг давгаа муу гэдэг. Тэгээд их болохоор зөргөөрөөс ингээд нэг бүл охинд хэлжсэн тэгээд Whatever the country and whatever the currency, the pimps always take their cut. It is the first night of the Ghost Festival in Hong Kong, an annual event when the gates of hell are said to open and when evil spirits are placated with offerings and the burning of incense, 
It is a night to avoid evil thoughts and immoral acts. For Hong Kong sex workers and their pimps, however, the doors are always open. The downtown streets of Hong Kong are known for their numerous bars and nightclubs, where sex is openly for sale. Unlike the prostitutes in Mongolia, the sex workers of Hong Kong are not in violation of the law. Pimps and organizing prostitution, on the other hand, is still considered illegal. Prostitution by itself is not a criminal offense in Hong Kong. Conversely, the customer who receives service from a, a sex worker is also not in breach of the law. The law would make it a criminal offense for middlemen who rip off the earnings of the prostitute. So we've got a law against people who, shall we say, live on earnings of prostitution. At massage parlors, karaoke bars, and even online, buying sex can be as easy as surfing the web. Although many women work independently, behind the scenes, some believe that centuries-old criminal organizations known as triads are still in control. I think the majority of these operations are triad related It's just like the mafia in Italy, or it's just a illegal a group of people using the, the name of the society, go into extortion, prostitution, dangerous drugs, protection, think that, that sort of things. Whether legal or illegal, prostitution ultimately finds itself under the control of gangs and networks of organized crime. And with these criminal groups, there is the inevitable conflict, violence, and battles over both women and territory. There is no question that violence haunts the sex trade at every turn. Whether between rival gangs, between pimp and prostitute, or involving the client, where there is sex for sale, there is danger. Mongolian authorities are cracking down hard on the problem and showing no mercy for those found guilty. In 2001, the Mongolian criminal court heard an unprecedented case. Seven men stood accused of various counts of beating, raping, and prostituting more than 200 women. The men allegedly sold women for 15 US dollars for one hour, or 30 US dollars for a full day of sexual service. Shara was a key member of the group. But the group went far beyond acting as intermediaries between the women and their clients. Prosecutors claim that although they could only prove a handful of the charges, the men were part of an organized crime network that victimized more than 200 women and underaged girls, including forcing them into prostitution. Testimony was heard from several prostitutes against the gang. Slowly, a clear picture began to emerge of how the pimps abused, raped, 
and threatened the women with death. The leader of the group, Mungun Peruvbat, was found guilty of organizing prostitution, as well as participating in robbery, torture, and gang rape. Peruvbat was sentenced to 15 years in a maximum security prison. Shara is serving eight years for his involvement in the gang's activities. These lengthy prison sentences reveal just how serious pimping and related crimes are to Mongolian law enforcement agencies. Like drug traffickers, pimps are seen as people who ruin lives and drag the country into moral chaos. By enticing and using violence to force women into prostitution, pimps ensure that the sex industry continues to thrive in the underworld of Mongolia. In the process, these pimps leave a trail of shattered lives and broken families in their wake. <laughs> Most probably because of the socio-economic situation in the country, prostitution will, will prosper. It will not go down because uh, uh, the number of poor families uh, is not going down, unfortunately. The numbers are actually increasing. So if the number of people who live in poverty increases, certainly these kind of social problems will certainly continue in the future. From the poorest areas of Mongolia to the seedy streets of Hong Kong, the sex industry traps criminals like Danny. Even he knows the life of crime he once led will only lead to more jail time. As a repeat offender, Danny now realizes it's time to change his ways or face the possibility of spending a life behind bars. of the high seas, outlaws of the ocean. For centuries, pirates have roamed the seas of Southeast Asia, attacking ships, taking hostages, even taking lives. Today, high seas crime is on the rise. Law enforcement agencies are reporting dramatic increases in pirate activity. On average, ships are being attacked every two to three days. Ruthless, professional, and highly organized, pirates are back in business, terrorizing the seas of Southeast Asia once again. At 
two in the morning on the 9th of March, 2011, officers of the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency pick up a ship's siren during a routine patrol. The signal has come from the MT Front Queen, a 300,000-ton tanker anchored off the west coast of peninsular Malaysia. Saya melakukan rondaan tak daripada jam pukul 4 petang. Saya keluar satu biji. Lepas tu satu biji lagi keluar malam dalam pukul 11. Jadi bila rondaan biasalah, floating bergelap. Lepas tu dah lebih kurang dalam jam 2 pagi, kurang 2, 2 suku lah. Ha, saya punya satu tim lagi sudah dapat ha, apa, terdengar bunyi horn kapal. Minutes before police arrive, seven pirates approach the boat under cover of darkness. They quickly board the anchored ship and take the 24-man crew hostage. The pirates chase several crew members with machetes. One man escapes and manages to sound the ship's horn, alerting nearby law enforcement agents. Waktu saya uh, dia tu kontak saya tu bergegas uh, pergi ke tempat kejadian dan dapati satu biji bot uh, yang mencurigakan duduk di belakang uh, di belakang kapal tu. Bila kita orang naik ke kapal tersebut yang dibunyi horn tadi, uh, siasat awal lah dia dapati dia telah naik ke kapal tu dan cuba apa umpir satu pintu uh, dan dah terbuka ada pintu tu. The pirates make a run for it, but are caught while trying to flee the scene. Bila kita orang cuba merapat dia tu lagi, dia lari, dia buang semua peralatan, gala, parang, pisau semua dia buang. Kita orang gari dia, lepas tu naik ke atas bot kita orang. Seven men are arrested for piracy and taken into custody. It's rare that such a chance encounter takes place at sea in Malaysia. Officers are quick to gather as much information as they can from the event. The incident on the 9th of March, uh, where we managed to apprehend seven robbers on site, it, it happens because we already conducted our operations. So all seven were apprehended, and we we found several tools as well as knives uh, belonging to the robbers. Upon investigation, they, uh, they are Indonesians. They were from Batam. It's the 11th incident of piracy in Malaysia this year. But Asia-wide, a total of 164 incidents of high seas crime were reported in 2010, up 60% from the previous year. Lately, the cases have been uh, increasing. One of the reasons, there have been quite a number of ships, you know, uh, being anchored off the waters. Vessels of all sizes pass through the Malacca Strait, carrying goods from one end of the world to the other. The region is said to handle 60,000 vessels per year, carrying 40% of global trade, including 75% of the world's petroleum. The strait is a choke point for shipping, where half of the world's fleet is directed into a narrow pass, making them easy targets for pirates. You find that these ships, they are vulnerable to robbery attacks. And uh, the robbers also will attack uh, vessels which are flying across this region, moving from west to east or east to west. The growing number of incidents is worrisome for authorities patrolling the straits, where pirates vary in their tactics. Many pirate groups amount to little more than ordinary burglars looking to get onto a ship quickly without being detected and grabbing whatever they can get their hands on. For an experienced pirate, the boarding and taking control of a ship can be completed in under five minutes. Kalau penyergapannya, Pak, ya, sangat mudah. Kita langsung merapat, dekat dikit, langsung nampakkan senapan kita. Kita suruh matikan mesin, dimatikan mesin. Karena di kapal itu tidak ada tempat menyandar untuk sembunyi, biarpun bagaimanapun kalah. Orang itu, ya, ikut saja apa yang kita arahkan itu. But other pirates have become highly organized and professional in their tactics, targeting equipment or larger sums of money often held in the captain's safe. These organized groups are considered heavily armed and dangerous. Kalau yang gini ya, di, kita perlu membagi tiga, tiga, tiga kategori perompak. Orang-orang dari di Kepri ini rompaknya beda karena mereka berurusan dengan perut 
ekonomi yang miskin dari daerah Palembang atau Sumatera Selatan. Nah, itu yang lebih ganas. Kalau mereka yang dari uh, Sumatera Selatan itu memang terkait dengan jaringan internasional. Itu itu untuk Palembang. Tapi kalau untuk yang di Aceh itu mereka memang menggunakan senjata semi otomatis karena itu memang untuk perjuangan mereka sering lebih lebih uh, ganas ya. They normally operate in group and the number of personnel in one group would be between six to eight personnel. Uh, normally they would carry one one small arms pistol or or, or even a revolver and uh, they would also carry the long knives parang we call it and and some would carry an axe or even a machete. And uh, what they normally do they would attack ships which are at anchor or ships that are moving but of uh, of low freeboard. On April 25th, 2010, another group of pirates approach a fishing boat off the northern coast of Malaysia. One of the fishermen would not survive. Kalau itu lawan, otomatis kita gariskan aja ini, supaya dia takut, biar dia berdarah. Dan ragu orang itu kepada kita, itu harus bapak tahu orang itu bisa membunuh. Across Asia, high seas pirates are staging a comeback. These hardened criminals are once again operating in organized groups, terrorizing vessels along busy shipping lanes from India to the Philippines. The nature of their attack is swift, coordinated, and professional. Those ship robbery cases, it is more usually uh, small boats with about four to six crew climbing on board in the middle of the night when you're at least vigilant. April 25th, 2010. A band of pirates approach a fishing trawler off the northern coast of Malaysia, near the border of Thailand. Suddenly, the pirates open fire. A 24-year-old Thai fisherman is shot four times in the abdomen and is later pronounced dead. The pirates quickly flee the scene. Bangladesh, October 27, 2004. The bodies of 14 fishermen are found inside the refrigerated hold of a fishing trawler. Authorities report that a group of pirates attacked the vessel, pushed the crew inside the hold, and locked the hatches above them. The men froze to death. These are highly secretive criminals, hiding out in isolated waterways of countries like Indonesia. Few people have ever been granted access into the underworld of real Southeast Asian pirates. Bila kita sudah ketemu dengan sasaran kita, kapal itu. Jadi ini kita masukkan di, di kapal itu sangkut, baru kita naik dari sini. Bila kita sudah dapat kapten, nah ini kita ini, dia ikut arah sini kita ini. Kapal tetap jalan. Kita hanya tunjuk di mana berangkas itu. Sudah kita ambil itu berangkas itu. Jadi gunanya linggis ini untuk mencongkel dulu. This style of piracy uses the element of surprise to instill fear in the crew. With their cooperation assured, the pirates can easily take whatever valuables they can get their hands on. Kalau itu lihat juga ada kalau ada kalanya US, ada kalanya lihat daripada kapal itu kalau mereka di berangkasnya banyak itu biasanya kali-kali sekitar lima ribu satu orang bagi lah. Itu sudah sudah potong minyak semuanya. Various pirate groups can be found operating from secret bases located deep within the Indonesian archipelago, where thousands of small islands provide ample space to hide. From Aceh in the west to Batam Island and further east to Sulawesi, these groups launch their attacks. Jadi untuk kita jangkau siapa pelaku itu apa, berapa yang masih aktif? Kalau kita hitung-hitung, ya sekitar lima ratusan lah, lima ratus lah. Seaceh ini sampai ke Medan. Yang untuk perompak laut bisa kita membagi ya secara perhitungan ya. Sekitar 200. Itu begitu juga orang itu apa bisa kita bilang itu masih mau melakukan? Kita tidak berani bilang. Karena grup ini bukan satu. These criminal organizations are responsible for countless incidents of violence in the area in recent years. The violence can be particularly bad when their victims are uncooperative. In these cases, 
a professional pirate won't hesitate to use his weapon. Blood may be spilled, sending a message to the rest of the crew. But every group has its own methods and its own tools of the trade. Kalau untuk Palembang, mereka um, dengan sangat gampang sekali di pasar gelap, mereka akan bisa mendapatkan senjata api dengan harga satu atau tiga juta. Gampang sekali dapat di daerah di daerah-daerah di uh, Sumatera Selatan. Perlu banyak. Itu pun kan satu pucuk pun mereka angkat tangan. Parang ada satu-satu, tapi tidak bisa diandalkan. Kalau senjata. Itu sudah kami apakan, sudah dibalut-balut itu supaya tidak nampak kualitas senjata apa, AK atau A16, kita tidak, tidak, tidak nampak. Pirate activity is extremely difficult for law enforcement agents to track. With such a large area of ocean in which to operate, pirates can easily shift their activities based on the presence of police. I think this is all coming down to when the policeman is around the corner, the crime takes place, it will take place in another location. So what we have actually seen over the last uh, five years, that uh, when uh, law enforcement starts zooming in a particular area, they will start shifting and they will go to another new area where uh, it may seem to be more porous and more lucrative. Again, when that starts to build up and the picture start to depict that this is an area of concern, and the law enforcement start to move in, again they move on. Pirates in Southeast Asia are finding new and potentially deadly methods of making big money. Certain groups are now using kidnappings to improve their earnings. The hostages are usually well-connected citizens or business owners who can afford to pay a large ransom for their release. The victims are held at secret locations, either at sea or sometimes on land, until the pirates receive their payoff. Senderanya pertama kami ambil di laut. Kami naik pakai sampan. Setelah itu, bawa ke tempat kolam, bikin sandra itu, jaga orang itu biar enggak lolos. Habis itu, kawan saya, dia bikin informasi lah sama orang itu. By taking one hostage, the pirate groups can earn tens of thousands of US dollars in ransom money paid in cash. The pirates use the sea to their advantage at every turn, and they simply do not believe they will be caught. Tidak ada uh, pemikiran ketakutan, tidak ada. Cuma karena uh, lokasi ini luas, kalau orang orang itu nyari saya di titik A, saya lari ke titik C. Ada kawan saya yang kasih kabar, oh orang sudah masuk, kamu harus bawa sini Sandra. Many of these men have become career criminals, losing sight of right and wrong. With no moral values, these pirates stop at nothing, whether robbing a ship, taking a hostage, or even taking a life. Itu hanya mencari, mencari sesuap nasi. Orang itu tidak ada berniat untuk membunuh, kecuali memang orang itu sudah terpaksa. Ragu orang itu kepada kita, itu harus bapak tahu orang itu bisa membunuh. From kidnappings to hijacking boats, Southeast Asian pirates are now reaching a level of organization that has never been seen before. International pirate syndicates are now under the control of secretive and ruthless kingpins, who are turning the pirate game into a multi-million dollar industry. Pirates in Southeast Asia are entering the world of international organized crime, chasing down million-dollar targets. February 6, 2010, the Singapore vessel Asta appears off the island of Tioman, Malaysia. Two months later, on April 19th, a second tugboat is targeted. Fifteen pirates attack the Singapore-registered vessel, called the PU-2007. Just eight days later, on the 27th of April, pirates hijack a third tugboat. The Atlantic Three goes missing near Bintan Island, Indonesia, directly across the strait from Singapore. 
The attacks on three different tugboats within such a short period of time raise flags with investigators. The hijackings bear all the markings of an organized and coordinated effort by an international criminal syndicate. Today, tugboats uh, seems to be the prime target. Two main reasons. One is that tugboats are usually very slow moving and they've got very low fleet boards, so they're very easy to board. And there is a second hand market today uh, for tugboats to be repainted and resold. With tugboats ranging in value from half a million up to eight million US dollars or more, the pirates are under orders from the syndicate to take control of the vessels. Through a network of black market contacts, the tugboat had been pre-sold to a buyer who was waiting in the Philippines. One month after it disappeared off Bintan Island, the Atlantic Three tugboat was recovered by the Philippines Coast Guard, 2,500 kilometers from where she had been hijacked. The ship had been issued with new papers, was flying under a new flag, and had a new name welded to its side. The Philippines uh, Coast Guard actually found the vessel in a shipyard. They were in the midst of trying to remove the tech well so to rechange the identity. And they had a ready buyer, and this buyer produced papers. Obviously, these were not uh, genuine documents. So uh, straight away, they, they were arrested, and the whole proceeding starts from prosecution, and the tugboat has been returned to the owner. These incidents are further evidence that pirates are now operating at a level of organization never seen before, with a network that stretches across an unknown number of countries. Bisnis ini kan bisnis rangkaian atau jaringan ini rompak laut ini kan sangat apa menggiurkan ya biasanya tidak bakal bisa mati. For the case of tugboats being hijacked, there is definitely a syndicate involved because it involves a group actually identifying which tugboat to be to target at. They know what, how much fuel they have, they know where it's supposed to go to, and then they board the ship. After they board the ship and taken, they hand over to another group who will do the repainting job, anyway. and then after it, once this is done, they will hand the third group who will do the actual sale. So it's a whole syndicate involved. These underground syndicates are believed to be run by crime bosses with connections deep into the shipping industry. The boss receives detailed information from a shipping industry insider. Everything is revealed, from the vessel's schedule to the nature of the cargo and number of crew on board. With this information, the pirates are ready to attack. And when these people, informers, said, oh, if you want, we can hijack this ship, then after that, he called people in Batam, Karimun, uh, in Rio Island, saying, hey, guys, I need, I don't know, a team, 15 people to hijack this tanker, these dates, OK. And then you have people in the Rio Islands. Uh, they know where these potential pirates are. But the money does no good to these men once they find themselves in prison. Pirates found guilty in court face steep jail terms and depending on national laws, may face various forms of corporal punishment as well. We in Malaysia, we don't have piracy acts yet. We have uh, our, we are using our penal code there. Yeah. Uh, that's good enough. Uh, uh, we secure them uh, through the acts of group robbery, which uh, can be sentenced up to the maximum of 20 years imprisonment. The seven pirates responsible for the attack on the MT Front Queen, a tanker hijacked in Malaysian waters, were charged and convicted of armed robbery at sea. After arresting them, what we did was we carried out the investigation to confirm the, the incident. So in, during, during the trial, they pleaded guilty and they were sentenced to 12 years imprisonment and, and uh, were given uh, three strokes of the rotan. Doing hard time has a way of bringing criminals back down to reality. Losing one's freedom inevitably opens the eyes of even the hardest criminals. Faisal is a former pirate who was caught in an undercover sting operation. Saya kalau berempat di laut sebagai pengatur, pengatur lapangan. Saya tuntutan karena berempat laut tiga tahun, hanya kena dua tahun setengah. 
In areas like Aceh, Indonesia, it's clear that years of civil war and widespread poverty drive many young men to crime. With large ships constantly sailing by, symbols of international business and wealth, many fall to the temptations of a criminal life. Masa pribadi saya uang, tapi itu ada di belakangnya juga itu karena kita kan orang pinggir laut, kan kita nelayan juga. Kadang-kadang kita nanti naik bol kecil itu mau nyari ikan, datang ke troll, langgar terus orang itu. Siapapun enggak marah. Makanya timbul perasaan kayak gitu. Kita bisa bikin kayak gitu. Kalau ada ekonomi mana mungkin kita jahat kayak gitu. As long as there is poverty and the hardships that come with it, there may always be those willing to risk their freedom and even their lives for more money. Kadang-kadang sambil tidur orang itu mau berangkat ya berangkat. Ini hari lapar, dua hari tahan lapar, nggak merokok, nggak makan, nggak ini, nggak itu, mulai merajuk lah orang itu. Langsung bekerja lagi. Itu juga orang yang setambah itu saya pun sendiri dikatakan tidak melakukan lagi tidak juga. Memang ya kepepet memang betul tidak ada yang lagi. For those pirates who remain still at large, it's only a matter of time before the law catches up with them. And when that happens, their only hope for reform will be spending some hard time behind bars. Our maritime areas is very secure, very much under control as compared to the other parts of the world. The tendency of people trying to interfere uh, with our local fishermen, yeah, they will face a serious uh, oppression from us. Saya ingin berubah jadi orang normal kembali. Dengan saya ingin menjadi orang baik, menjadi orang biasa aja, kerja ke laut, ke laut, gitu aja lah. Ya kejadian itu kan baru waktu itu kalau kita pikir-pikir kejadian yang sudah-sudah itu, memang ada timbul penyesalan pula, ya kan? Ya namanya pasti hukum karma kan pasti berlaku.